Kevin B., a Sly Flourish patron, asks, We all want to improve, but is there a point where watching, reading, and online chatting just becomes counterproductive? Is there just too much advice, even good advice, to keep track of? This is a really good question. It gets, it gets into the question of how we use our tips instead of just thinking about the tips themselves. And Kevin's exactly right. There is a point where there's just too much. So there's really two extremes to this. The first is every time we see a new DM running a game, every time we pick up a new tip, every time we hear about a new system or figure out a new tool, we change everything. We throw everything out that we ever thought and everything else that we knew, and we try entirely different things every time. This can be really common if we're really into the tips that we see. If we really like read every one of them and think, that's fantastic, I have to completely redo how I do NPCs based on this. And that's one extreme. The other extreme is not changing at all. That every new tip you see, every idea you hear about, everything else, you just resist it. And instead stay, I've been playing D&D for a long time, I know what I'm doing, I don't need to change. Both of these are extreme circumstances. And of course, the answer lies somewhere in the middle. What is the, what is the balance between these two? What I'd suggest is think about it in the term of small experiments and small adjustments. Instead of looking at entirely new systems and throwing out everything we ever knew and trying everything over again, instead we can just take an idea that we like and think about how we would put that into our next game. We don't have to bring 30 new ideas to our next game. One or two, we could just try some stuff out. And we can run these small experiments. If we just think, hey, here's a new way I can run a monster, let me try that. Or here's a new idea for building an NPC, let me try that out. Perhaps I run really hard combats most of the time because I feel like that's where the time is best spent, but I heard that it might be a good idea to try an easy battle. I don't have to change everything up. Instead, I could say, let me just try one easy battle. Maybe I do all of my combat in a grid all of the time, but I've heard that theater of the mind can be kind of interesting and I want to try it out. So maybe I try it out for one small battle with two bandits that isn't really going to matter. We don't have to change our entire system around every time. We can just run these small experiments when it makes sense. And once we've run these experiments, we can adjust our game accordingly. Maybe we liked the idea that we ran and we want to do it again. We go ahead and do it again. Maybe we tried it out and it really wasn't for us. Well, then we let it fade away. And what happens is our game style changes, but it doesn't change all at once. It changes over time as we incorporate all of these new ideas just a little bit at a time as we're going along on our path. So how much is too much? Well, the most important question you can ask is, is it getting in the way of you playing games? Stephen King has a great quote about this in his book On Writing, in which he says, if you want to be a writer, you must do two things above all others, read a lot and write a lot. And the same is true for D&D. The same is true for running role-playing games. We're going to get better by running games. That's the number one way we're actually going to improve. All of the tips that we read, all of the videos that we watch, all of the things that we pick up, none of that really matters if we're not running games. If you find that all of the videos and all of the tips, all of the articles that you read, all of the different pieces of advice that you're getting from all over, if that is getting in the way of you running your games, it's not helping out. The most important thing is running your games. You also don't have to keep track of all of the different tips that you pick up. It's perfectly acceptable to let tips come in, consider it, and let them go away. Really good tips are likely to come back. I've been writing tips on Twitter for 10 years. I've got more than 3,000 D&D tips that I've posted to Twitter, and trust me, no one's keeping track of them. I'm not keeping track of them. They come and they go. I repeat myself a lot. Good tips come back. Good ideas come back. And bad tips tend to fade away. Not everything is outstanding. And sometimes you might pick up a tip and you go, oh, that's not bad. And you might forget it. And it might come back again. And if it comes back again or you see somebody use it or you hear something and somebody talked about it, well, that might be one that's worth incorporating into your system. But you don't have to keep track of every single one of them. One thing you definitely want to be careful of is tool obsession. As DMs, we love to see new tools, new accessories, new bits of software, new kind of things that we see, and it's really easy to gravitate towards them. That's not what we should be focusing on, though. What we should be focusing on is what is actually helping our game. Anytime you're looking at a new tool or accessory, it really helps to stop, take a minute, and ask yourself, is this really going to dramatically improve my game, so much so that it's worth my time and my energy and my money to invest in it? While we're all going across this DM's journey, all of us seeking to get better at running our games, we're building a toolbox for ourselves, right? We're building both a mental and a physical toolbox of tools that we find that really help us run great games. But a good part of keeping that toolbox clean is to take parts of it and throw them away. Not everything is worthwhile. Not every tool is worth keeping in that toolbox. The stuff that we decide to pass on is just as important as the stuff that we decide to bring into it. So before you find yourself gravitating to the next biggest tool, the next biggest trick, the next biggest tip, ask yourself if it's really gonna help your game. Run your small experiments, try to see what is helping, make small adjustments to your own game as you go, and, but most importantly, have fun running D&D games for you and your friends. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me out by subscribing to the Sly Flourish newsletter, subscribing to my videos on YouTube, becoming a patron of Sly Flourish, or picking up any of my books. 
Thank you very much and have a great day.